Thank you for tuning in to another edition of DJ of interview with DJ Nocturna. And if you're watching on my YouTube channel, please like and subscribe and please uh, make a comment if you like this interview. This show will air on Saturday, October 23rd, 2021. My guest, I got two um, distinguished gentlemen and it's an honor to have them both. I got the multi-platinum selling record producer who's, who's best known for one of, that's one of the founders of the musical collective, This Mortal Coil, and in 2016, <laughs> and in 2016, he launched his own project, Black Needle Noise, the legendary music producer, John Fryer. And I also got the other legendary um, music record label founder, one of the founders of Comic International, which is based in Oakland, California, founded in 1991. I got Christian Petke. Yay! Is that good? Hey, go okay. Christian. Okay. Yeah, go Christian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean you gotta be you gotta be elaborate, right? You gotta be you gotta complete the whole thing. So thank you both for joining me. So it's such an you're honor. You're welcome. Glad you're feeling better. Thank you. You know, I've been wanting to interview both of you at the same time because I know you guys are have been working together in this uh, collaboration. You know, it's been it's been collaboration month for me. You know, I've I've interviewed like a few a few of um, the artists in Comic International who's been collaborating. <laughs> so, you know, we got the, the new moon in Libra, which is uh, about collaboration and partnerships. So of all kinds. So, you know, so you guys have been together and collaborating in, uh, um, since 2019, right? I've been, I've been following and I got really excited when I heard about that. Pretty so well. how did that, how did that all start it? Over to you, Christian. How okay, did you guys well, uh, that was, thank you, Facebook, unbelievable. Uh, John posted something about remix work and, you know, hit me up. I, I forgot what the exact phrasing was. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, okay, sure. I got to give that a shot. I was rather nervous about that. <laughs> and um, I think I just found the file. I think the first thing you did is a DLI remix, 2015. And, you know, we talked a little bit and knows that, and, you know, we just stayed in touch. And then you did one for uh, Chiasm. And then, you know, he, he's like, so you, you want me to record the album? And I'm like, oh man, <laughs> you know, I kind of had to, to wrap my head around that. And then basically um, I was looking for my own project, Death Line International. Um, and I remember I was sitting exactly here. It was late at night. I was listening to the remix that he did for us. And I was like, okay, I think I really want this guy to produce this album. Maybe we can work something out. Truth, of course, is that I wanted him to produce an album for Deathline for the last 20 years. I just couldn't afford it. <laughs> well, I didn't get to him. That was even worse. I think uh, I, I found a manager. And he he could afford it. He was just too nervous to ask. Well, not really true, because I tried. And back in the day, you know, I just couldn't get to That there, there were too many layers of protection around you. I think that was the problem. Yeah, you, yeah. There's so much. I mean, I was trying to get to him at that at that club. When uh, I Annie walked straight up to me and it's just like, "Hi, I'm Annie. Do you want to come to Hawaii and DJ?" And it's like, "Fuck no! Why would I want to do that?" I said, of course I do. <laughs> <laughs> no, I found out he was going to be at this club, and so I go, "Oh my God, that's John Fryer. Let's go over there." And then I saw him, and then I go, "Oh, yeah." And then he just like, "What? What? What? What?" I don't know. It's really funny. Yeah, so Cat Club in San Francisco. The Cat Club, yeah. And what uh, was it? Chasing Ghosts the night with Alex Alex Wolf. Yeah, it was the four AB. You were doing four AB mute and uh, some other stuff. Yeah, uh, like how many? I still I have. Think it. It was just a four AB mute retrospective DJ set. Yeah, no, it was a great set. Yeah, so so both of you guys now are doing this collaboration, and you know I've uh, I know you you released some um, some albums uh, in, on on Comp International, which I just did this one, you know the Venus Chariot that just came out, and then the the Predator album, right? Right. Yeah. So, what is your vision uh, for for Comp International? I know you guys want to put, um, you know, what is the collaboration? What is the vision? that you're looking at for the, you know, for the, I guess, for moving forward. John, you want to go? Christian, over to you. <laughs> <Hi>. <laughs> well, the vision is 
The vision is to let Christian talk, but I'll talk over him anyway, is to release amazing music. And don't segregate. We had a long conversation about that. So yeah. What, what that actually was all about is like at some point we were talking about the direction where we yeah. to this, and we both basically came from a point where we were like, you know what? If something is good, it will fit on the label versus trying to like have a very, you know, small segment of music available. Because I think both of us love music and mm -hmm. the whole breadth of it, right? Um, the whole spectrum of it. Yeah. Spectrum. Thank you. Um, and so anyway, that, that was kind of the vision. Excellence um, and good music. And it sounds very simple, but I don't think it actually is. And then also think big. We really like, you know, we, we try to, to make some waves. Yeah, and I, you know, Comp International have been around since 1991. So this is like your, your 30th anniversary this year, correct? Yes. Yeah, that's why I wanted to do this interview this year. So we can get that mark, you know, since um, since you guys are doing that, it was been thirty years, and your your ro your artist roster has been expanding now. So what what are the artists in the this this in Compact National so far? And well, I, I mean, the, the first thing I think, um, you know, it took me almost a year to really figure out how to do. I call it Cop 2.0. Mm -hmm. uh, um, the way it was basically structured is like I wanted to wrap my own album. I was selfish. <laughs> for once because um cop was really like you know wound down quite a bit we maybe did one album a year or something like that and um i i took basically a mental break and when i met john you know um we started talking i was like wow dude you know the sky's the limit so to speak so i think um it, it was really surprising for me um, that all of this kind of started to explode the first thing and I think this, this was really important was like, okay, I wanted this to be different than the first um, section of the label, so to speak. And the major difference was I, I was really thinking, I was tr trying to, to um, get artists on board that were a little bigger than what we had before. So I think Stabbing Westward was clearly the first thing, you know, um, obviously John has worked with them before. Um, it's one of my, Ungod is one of my favorite albums of all times. I think mm -hmm. I had that in my player for about 10 years <laughs> on heavy rotation. And so for them to come on board was really the starting point. And then everything else is starting to kind of snowball. Right, right now we're in an enviable position that I actually have to turn down a lot of bands because you know we can only handle so much and mm -hmm. I don't want to dilute, so to speak. You know, And I have a daytime job. <laughs> I have basically two, I have cop and my other thing. And so basically, you know, I'm trying to, you know, to do as much as I can, but at the same time, not to, you know, to take on too much so we cannot handle it. Yeah. And John, you know, your Black Needle Noise released uh, a new single on the on comp, on the comp label, right? Yes, Machine. Yeah. Yes. yes, with Ad Ada Selena. Selena, yes. Yeah. And that, have you interviewed that, her yet? What's that? Have you interviewed her yet? No, I, I want to. Yeah, you should do. She's an yeah. amazing person. Yeah, that's, you know, you, you read my mind. I was just thinking about that today. Yes, now, we are connected. Our minds are connected. Yeah, of course. They're, they're both in here. Yeah, they see, <laughs> they black needle noise, undress yeah. the, the mug, and uh, see how connected we are. I even got the shirt, the black needle noise shirt. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll make it nicer. There we go. <laughs> Next time I have to wear the Comet to National shirt. Yeah. <laughs> so um, you're not going to do a costume change halfway through the interview. Um, no. Well, I don't have a Comet to National. I I have to get the shirt first, and then I'll. I can oh, do okay. Not, yeah. I fix that for you, I think. <laughs> so how, how did you meet John? How did you meet Ada Selena? And how did you collaborate on that um, single? I met her. Uh, funny enough, I met her in uh, Ojai. I mm -hmm. went there to meet um, Chris Minister and Daniel Ash, because mm -hmm. Daniel oh. Ash lives there. And, it, um, and in the hotel lobby, she was just moving out of town as I came into town to visit for a couple of days. And we just spoke in, um, re, you know, in reception where she had all the, because she's an amazing photographer too. So she had a picture yeah. spread around reception and started talking and found out she sang. And then um, 
she actually was on the first album that we put out. Yeah, nice. that's right. Yeah. Messages by Dreams, right? Yeah. Also that one, that was before on, on your other label on Black Needle Noise, right? Yeah, well, that was just, yeah, when I was just putting this stuff out myself, yeah. Yeah, so so this so this single is this going to be part of um of another of a bigger record, of a, uh, the single. Bigger than twelve inch. No, like a part of um of a release of a. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> it will be part of an album at some stage. I mean, I have a, I actually being uh, I've been bad is actually a back catalog of music I need to put out as the third album, and that would go on the fourth album. Uh huh. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I know you, you released recently too, This Mortal Covers. Yes. Yeah, I have that too. Black Needle Noise, This Mortal Covers. And uh, this is like, um, I mean, you've got uh, Angela Picard in here, you know, your wife. Yes. <laughs> and many okay, other so, okay. So talking about that, uh, that was released uh, via uh, Cleopatra, but um I've got the album back from Cleopatra and we're going to relaunch the album via Cop International with an amazing video for She Talks to Angels featuring Angela Picard. <laughs> yeah, nice. That, great. Will be, that will be released on November the 5th through Cop International, relaunching the album. Oh, okay. Oh, and hopefully okay. through our friends down in Australia, if we can uh, somehow work out the time differences and talk. <laughs> okay. Now, in this album, John, I know you, you were singing too, right? Didn't you sing here? Yes, Bang Bang. Yeah, no, I like that one. I play that all the time. I like it when you sing. You should sing more often. Yeah, and there's also uh, I Face the Wall. I sang on that. And there's uh, another song, I Am You, that's not been, well, it was kind of released as a seven inch, but uh, vinyl only. But we're going to be relaunching that as a digital version. And I'm sure there's some other tracks we may sing on somewhere. Oh yeah, Neon Noir is another one. Now, I, I, now you started in uh, many years ago in 1979 at Blackwing Studio. I do believe yeah. it was 1980, but 79, 80, somewhere around there. I don't know. Yeah. Long time ago. Very long time ago. In, uh... Many, many, many moons ago. <laughs> wow, and I, I never thought I would meet him one day. You know, can you believe that? I've been listening to 4AB for since since I was a child, <laughs> and uh, yeah. Um, so I know you have other collaborations are coming up in, on on um, Comic International with Azam Ali. Is that would that be coming out soon, or is that still in the works? Well, that's that's a very secret project that we can't talk <laughs> about. <laughs> okay. But it will be released via Cop International in 2025, I do believe. <laughs> the way it's going. <laughs> Hopefully a little faster. Yeah. Well, we're looking forward to that. Yeah. We're going to talk about it for a long time to build up the, you know, to build up the hype. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. We'd love to have her back on the show, actually, as um, you know, uh, in the future. Um, yeah, I'm working on, yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. And there was the collaboration with uh, Shazam, which um, hopefully there'd be another album with her, but we have to see, see how she feels about that. So Christian, is there anything, anything coming up for, um, for Compton Match on any other releases? Dude. I know, I know, I know the Roan Liederman Venus Chariot came out and came out. They are also working on a single. And Stoneburner? Uh, we got Stoneburner is touring right now like crazy. I'm very excited for him because he's really working yet. We're going to do another single. Um, we have a local band, Suicide Queen, that we're really excited about. Um, Deathline is going to put something out. Yay, uh, Deathline single. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're the Deathline. No, this is really cool because uh, what this is a yeah, different story. But anyway, I'm very, very excited about that. And it's not an easy thing for me to say that. When I talk about my own music, it's always a little bit more difficult. Anyway, um, stabbing. Uh, and stabbing you're, inter right. you're interviewing the singer of Deathline International right there. Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> He's one of the founders with Sean Bryce, right? Don't get me started because then I can go on for the rest of the night. No, let's put it this way I've been working on this for a very long time. 
And uh, having John on board is like literally a dream come true because um, I think he's able to, to, to get the sound that I've been looking for all my life. And that's not an easy feat. And then um, on the next single, Christopher Hall did a remix that we're really excited about. Um, just finished the video. Did you hear that, John? I finished the video <laughs> <laughs> for that track. So uh, that's going to come out at the uh, beginning Bandcamp Day, next Bandcamp Day. Stabbing Westwood is putting out a single. So mm -hmm. we're going to be really, really busy. Uh, I think right now we're going basically at a rate of about two releases a month. And it just looks like it's going to be accelerating. So it's totally insane. Uh, but at the same time, super exciting. Because like the, the one thing that that gets me up in the morning is when I listen to our music and, you know, I'm excited about it. Uh, I think it sounds amazing. I think it, you know, um, the, the talent is exceptional. And that is something that, yeah, is incredibly awesome. Um, and at the rate we're going, yeah, the sky's the limit. It's super exciting. So, you know, yeah. I, I noticed the cop um, has a logo. They have a little inscription on the side of the logo, something like demand the flow and rhythm. Yes. <laughs> Well, so basically it's funny because right now we have almost like we have two logos. So Demand the Flow of Rhythm was the beginning um, because I came from punk rock and I was very fascinated by electronic beats, and which was, you know, uh, uh, mid, mid 80s is the first time I ran into that. I was like, holy shit, this is really, really cool. Started working with bands with MIDI and before that everything was like four or five guys in rehearsal space. So that was basically the first idea. And then we, we now have the Phoenix as a secondary logo. And the Phoenix to me seems very appropriate because you oh, yeah. know I like that one. A new it's 2.0. It's something new. We're coming out of the ashes and you know with a vengeance. So again, very, very excited. Now you founded Deathline International with Sean Bryce. This is many years ago, right? Right. Well, basically, I founded Deathline International and Cop International literally at the same time because Deathline was always the house band. So we had a studio. And you know, whoever was recording with me at the time, I was doing Deathline on the side and I was like, hey, you can play guitar, you wanna play guitar or you wanna do some drums or whatever. So basically at this point that we have over 50 people in the band, where mm -hmm. I was always traveling. I was three months here, three months over in Germany. So whoever was available, basically I worked with. And um, I've been a musician in Germany for a long time. So I had a lot of friends there. So I flew some over and you know, that's, that's how it all started. But Sean was the other part. We were basically the, the core. And then everybody else was kind of satellite flying in around us. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, 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 and I noticed too, you, you, now you're based in, uh, in Oakland, California. Yes. Right? And I, I see um, your wife and it's an amazing pastry chef. <laughs> <laughs> and Baker, she's killing me very slowly. It's a deviant. <laughs> Every time I see the pictures over there, I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> No, well, that, that was born out of the pandemic, you know. This is one of the reasons why I actually moved to America, besides that the Bay Area is an absolutely lovely place to be. It's this whole thing that you can just, um, you know, you, you, you can very easily set something up. You have a dream and you can execute it. There's very little red tape and, you know, the sky again is the limit. So um, she lost her job and I was like, well, you know, we've been baking at home anyway, so we might as well just sell it. And she started and people were super excited. I learned that we have a massive German community in the Bay Area. Mm. And, um, she's making a lot of German breads. And if you ever talk to a German, if they miss anything, if they're not back home, it's bread, hardcore. Because all the other breads shit our stuff with it. Amazing. Well, uh, I'm actually going over there around Halloween. There we go. <laughs> go check that bread out. <laughs> John, have you ever had the bread? John? Yes. Have, have you ever had have you ever had um the the bread his, his, the bread he's talking about his wife's i've had german bread from his wife i've had german bread in germany i've had a uh, european bread it's it's <laughs> it's so much i don't know it's so much better than american bread you always get that wonder bread where you squash it into like you know into an inch and it just jumps back into its full size <laughs> it's strange <laughs> it's like the one of those those twinkie bars that you know will it, they will, them and roaches will survive the nuclear explosion. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I know that, uh, John, you helped develop the ethereal sound quality of 4AB, you know, with this mortal coil and all that. Um, would, you, would you ever want to work again with Elizabeth Frazier? 
I would love to work with Elizabeth Fraser. I was trying to contact her for ages, but I couldn't uh, couldn't get in contact. And when they were when she was here with Massive Attack, um, yeah, yeah, I couldn't find out uh, where she was going to be. And, and I saw pictures of someone. Oh, yeah, I was in a, I was just sitting in a pub, and she walked in, and then we had a drink together. And it's like so. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, yes, I would love to. Okay, well. Um... Is there maybe any... we can maybe we can do a collaboration, do an album for COP. Yeah. That would happen. Wouldn't that be nice? Yes, I mean, I would I would love that so much. I would love to I would love to play that. Well, hopefully you will. Hopefully you will one day. <laughs> yeah. If you have connections with her, you can you can put that forward. Well, hopefully she'll listen. <laughs> she'll be listening to this interview. Yeah, yeah. That would be good. Then you can get her on your show to interview her too. Yeah, I would love that. Yeah, she's she's always been, you know, um, one of my favorite songs, of course, is uh, you know, um, you know, the one that you did uh with her. The, which, which one? Um what was it? Uh was it called Song to the Siren or something? Yeah, the song to the siren, yeah. The Jeff um the Buckley, uh, Tim Buckley song. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful song. I mean, I it's so beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Wait. Well, anything else that uh, anything else that you want to mention? Uh, are you guys planning? Are you, is Black Black Noodle Noise going to be uh, uh, doing some some tours in the future? We like, hope to be. Yeah. As I know, I know you did that before the pandemic. Yeah, you were touring. Yeah, and yeah. I'll, we did the we did the world tour of Hollywood, and Christian was there to witness one of the shows. Yeah. Yeah, I was supposed to go to that show you had in uh, South America. Yeah, we're still we're still trying to work out to um, get down to Chile, and uh, I mean that's what the moustache is all about: is to go down there and to uh-huh. act in a movie, uh-huh. which a secret movie we can't talk about, but it's a western set in Chile in the eighteen uh, hundreds, about eighteen eighty. Oh, is that what you were doing? Like when I was in LA, is that what you you were saying something? You were recording something. Yeah, yeah, no, we'd, um, we're working with Pablo, uh, the director, who's just finished, um, what do you call it? This is not synopsis of the, of the movie. Mm-hmm. And then we've got to try and raise funds now to um, shoot the movie down in Chile. Oh, Chile. Okay. Chill LA, Chile. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we look forward to that. So, uh, Black Needle Noise is your website is blackneedlenoise.com and uh, for Comp International, it is copint.com, right, Christian? Yes. Okay. Cop Inc. All right. Speak more, Christian. Come on. (laughs) (laughs) No, she did a beautiful job. It's all good. Well, I I know that you guys always have something going on and, um, you know, I mean, you got a beautiful website, both of you, and everything is in there. I see that, and uh, and I, I'm I'm always looking forward to all the all the bands that you and and the the you know the the current member uh, the current artists on your roster. That's going to be super exciting. We have you know we have a couple that we haven't announced yet. I'm negotiating. Oh, okay. Is that a secret? Yes. So <laughs> I cannot spill it. Sorry, but soon. And um, no, it, it's, it, you know, it was, it was interesting because I had to lay, lay a lot of groundwork, you know, mm-hmm. uh, I, I did a lot of thinking about what a modern label um, has to do and represent. And I think it's a very different relationship now. It used to be very clear, you know, the label is on top and the artists are at the bottom. And I think at this point, it's really more about partnership, working together and creating something together. And um, in, in a lot of ways, that is something, it's a new approach and, you um, you know, it comes with its own challenges, but it's also very, very exciting and fun because you, you, you basically, you know, it's instead of having a couple of people on the label and then everybody going around, it's like almost you have 40 people that are working together on creating something. If, if I would go back to the vision idea, I think a little bit like an artist community. Mm-hmm. One of my dreams was always to, to buy a factory and break it down into rehearsal spaces, you know, a concert hall, a cafe, something like that. And I don't think that's in the card, not in the Bay Area at the current real estate prices, but we are able to do something like that in a, almost like in a virtual world. 
you know, we have international artists, we have artists all over the place, mm -hmm. and we can now actually work together. It's really easy, you know. Um, you can form a band literally across the internet, so to speak. Um, you can work together on something. So in, you were talking about the website to, to, to a degree that is an extension of that. And another thing that I think is a little different that I really, really, really appreciate, um, it used to be that there was more competition like us against the rest of the world. And I see a lot of people collaborating. Yeah. And that's, it's it's incredibly heartwarming to see that energy, you know, because by the end of the day, we all have the same dreams and aspirations. We want to, you know, be artists. We want to be something special. We want to create something. And now we can find like-minded people and surround ourselves with them. And I think, you know, when you have 40 people pulling in one direction, that can be very, very powerful. And that's kind of what we're going for. Yeah, because I can see the growth of the of the label. You know, I can see all these new artists that I've never seen before. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, it is it is really going at a dramatic clip. The only limitation right now is literally um, my time mm -hmm. and you know, my desire to do a good job, basically. <laughs> but um, the reality is another thing is, you know, you hear a lot of people complain a lot about um, there's no more good music, you know, because they, they, they stop at some point to be curious. And the reality is um, there's amazing amounts of talent out there. And mm -hmm. I think um, the, the first order of business for us was get artists excited about the label. And I think that's definitely happening. You know, um, I can see that by all the people that are reaching out to me and saying, hey, <laughs> what are you up to? <laughs> you know? And also about the quality that we're getting. I mean, a record label can always, you can see wh where you're at by the mm -hmm. quality of the demos that you get. Uh -huh. I have to say, I mean, the demos are amazing. You know, it's, it's, it's a real joy. I mean, for me, I'm, I'm, by the end of the day, the, I'm a fan of music. And so mm -hmm. being able to, to, to listen to some really brilliant, exciting music is, is a total joy. And I mean, that's one of the beautiful things about working with John. Um, he does a lot of that. <laughs> I mean, you know, he, he sends me a lot of things he's working on. And it's like one of my favorite things on the planet is getting a, a text from John. It's like, you got mail which means I have a wee transfer <laughs> and he just can you know, he sent me a brand new song he's been working on. And that is so exciting. It's really, I mean, you know, in, in a lot of ways, it's, it's crazy. Sometimes I still scratch my head, and, you know, I wake up in the morning, like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and it's so cool. I love it. <laughs> and on top of that, the, the other thing is, you know, when you, um, when you start a partnership, uh, I had a bunch of partnerships in my life, uh, life and um, it's difficult. It's not easy. Uh, a lot of times you don't necessarily see eye to eye. Um, you can have arguments. And strangely enough, because um, there's only one way to find out is by working together. Um, working with John has been seriously awesome because most of the time we literally see eye to eye. And he's also somebody that I can go up to and say, hey, John, I have this problem. <laughs> can you give me a hand or what's your take? And I, you know, here's somebody with an insane amount of experience. Oh yeah, well, here, how about this? How about that? So literally, you know, I talked to him last Friday and I was, planning to release the deadline single a little earlier, but I wasn't really happy about the timing. And then he goes like, well, where's the video? And I'm like, dude, I have no time to do a fucking video. And he's like, yo, you're going to have time to make a video. <laughs> Stuff like that. It's really, really <laughs> awesome. No, it's, it's, it's uh, I have to say, I, I was really kind of burned out on partnerships. And um, that has been a really, really, really beautiful relationship. Um, actually, that really took me by surprise because it's one thing to admire someone's work, you know, and mm -hmm. then sometimes you meet the people that you really admire and you realize the human being might not be as amazing as the work that they do. But in John's case, I think uh, they're at least level. So that was a really nice surprise. So, John, you hear all those wonderful things said about you? <laughs> no, no, sorry, it was breaking up. I couldn't hear a word. Can you repeat all that? <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> no, there's definitely something wrong with the line. You need to say all that again. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. It's really good. Uh, great sense of humor, you know? <laughs> I know. It's really a funny guy. He's always been funny. Yes. And so, also, also coming out on um, COP is uh, Black Car Burning. Oh, yeah, I see that. Single coming out, where, or singles coming from that. And 
there's going to be an awesome video from Johnny Tupelo too, or Tupolov, which is going to be, uh, people are going to be amazed when, I, when they see that, I think. As long, along with the, you know, the Death International uh, video and the Black Needle Noise video. It's a lot of videos and music coming out. So it's very, very stimulating for, uh, you know, visually and, and orally. And also G GW Childs, right? Yeah, yeah, we, yeah we're, we're pushing the, uh, the electro country thing too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, which is good. I like it. It's something I always wanted to do, move into the country scene and uh, with the uh, GW. It's, we're gonna that's different. That's really, that's very different. Yeah. I don't think I ever heard of anything like that before. Yeah, but I like things. It's, it's like I like things to be different. If I did the same thing every day, it would just be boring. I might as well work in a factory. So, you know, I like to <laughs> I like to mix things up. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Well, you have, you know, you have been. I mean, you've been doing this for so. I mean, your, I mean, your credentials are amazing. <laughs> you know, uh, from Depeche Mode to Nine Inch Nails. You know, um, but as, as I always say, it's from it's like uh, from the Cocteau Twins to Cradle of Filth and every, everything in between. So you go from the ethereal to black metal and everything in between that. Right, right. So who is Doctor Strange Fryer? Um, <laughs> that you, is, have, you have to interview him next time. <laughs> <laughs> he wears different sunglasses to these. There we go. Yeah, I'm just wondering who that one was. Also, he doesn't have a mustache. <laughs> yeah. Perhaps you can do a uh, interview with uh, Angela Picard about her covers and Doctor Strangefire about his vocals too. Yeah, where's Angela? Graphics. <laughs> there she is. Hey, what's up? Hey, Angela. <laughs> Designing, getting my nerd on. <laughs> I know. I, I see her. Um, have you seen her new? Have you seen her new website with her new? Oh uh, yeah, she told she met me the other day. With her new, you can get some new T-shirts and mouse pads and leggings or hats. Or, I know she's an amazing artist. Your wife. Shower curtains. Um, yeah, you name it, you can get it. I know. Hi, right, Angela. <laughs> hey, bye. I know it's, it's, it was so good to see you guys in LA and you Christian you missed out I know <laughs> you talk about and what I got in return was no fun I was sick like a dog for the whole weekend it was not good yeah well okay that was, uh, that was fun DJing at uh, Judy's event yeah I know that was really fun I had so much fun and seeing all you guys you know um just uh, you know, seeing also um, you know um, um, Brian, Brian and Marcel, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah everybody it was so a lot of fun. Judy, yeah, yeah, had so much fun. Luckily, I didn't get sick then, but yeah, <laughs> I mean that was. Uh... <laughs> but we're looking forward to coming back to uh, Hawaii to uh, another event, DJ at another event, maybe know, maybe we'll huh? play over there too. Yeah, you can sort that out. Yeah. Well, whenever somebody, when, when they start opening up places again, you yeah. know, hopefully soon. Okay. Well, yeah. Well, thank you both for joining me. You know, um, so once again, Cop International is C-O-P-I-N-T dot com. If, you, if anybody want to check out your, the music and the artists on, on the label, right? And the latest news and blackneedlenoise.com as always. And, you know, congratulations to you both, you know, for the collaboration. And I'm looking forward to more music. Yeah, same here. Yeah. Well, you'll be, getting, you'll be getting more music very soon. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I, I got them right here, you know. It's a great, it's a great cover too, this picture, you know. Um, that was fun. That, that was another thing that's happening. Greg Rolfs did uh, design for that. I know. Yeah, it's great. And, yeah, it's and nice. you know, it, it's, it's really cool to have people coming forward and are willing to help. And yeah. it's been really, really, really cool. He just uh, designed the, the new Deadline cover. He did it in a couple of hours. I gave him a rough idea of what I was looking for. He came back and it was perfect. The only yeah. changes were the ones that he wanted to do. That's so unusual for me because usually I'm super picky, but it was just perfect. 
So, you know, in a lot of ways, that's we're going back to the idea of the collective. Mm -hmm. it, it's really nice to see when people co uh, collaborate and have fun with it. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much for having for being on the show. Thank you. I'm just gonna stop the recording here, but don't <laughs> hang up. Okay. Thank you both. Thanks, John. Thank you, and thank you. I'm glad you're feeling better. Thank you. Wait, and uh, wish your mother well from us and your uh, the rest of the family. Thank suffering. you very much. Thank you. What, one second.